Welcome back. You're watching Inside Politics. It's now time for your call. Feel free to call in our studio's line. The number displayed on your screen, 0732142590. We already have our first caller on the line, Francis Moranga from Kisi County. A very good afternoon to you. How are you doing today, Francis? I'm doing quite fine, sir. Yes, it's been a long time. I think I have been with you for quite some time. Yes. And I'm happy with your panelists. They are all very competent people. Okay. Who can take Kenya somewhere only that they don't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> to, go to, the, to go to the point, uh -huh. the issue related to fertilizer into the country, this is a big shame for sure. It doesn't even require somebody from Kiganjo to go and do that investigation. Because for us to receive Kokoto, Yani parents, as part of Vataraisa, it is a big shame for the government. With that one, I don't have to say much from that. I go straight to Matembea issue. Uh -huh. Matembea is a competent governor. He has seen the problem people of Transoya and the Kenya in general are facing because many of our people, those who are elected, they just go to sacrifice. They are only glorifying one person, the president, without knowing that they were elected by people. Uh -huh. For that, you know, I just remember that Matembea, you see, we from 1992. He has been there, but you cannot say anything that he has done. Come to Kisi, it's almost the same. People are trading Governor Simba Zarati. Somebody who has support even the bugs for Kisi. Somebody like also from South Mugrango is saying no to those bugs because they bear the picture of Simba Zarati. Okay. Surely, if this person can notify even a pencil to the people of South Mogilango, to kids to go with to school, how can he stop governor from doing his work? This is the type of training which cannot take us somewhere. Therefore, the governor Matembea let him call the cane properly and the teach uh, uh, the speaker at least there some reason there. I don't. I don't fear to say so. Okay, Francis. Coming to need need in your voice, double speaking. Briefly, that one is a big shame to our country that we don't have competent MPs. All of them seem to be psychopaths of somebody somewhere where we cannot take our country elsewhere. Thank you. I can't say much yet. I also say. Even though I wanted to talk about Bako Wino, Bako Wino, let him talk to political owners of the country. From there, I think he can get somewhere. Okay. Okay, Francis. Thank you so much for your contribution right there. We value your feedback and keep Thank it you, inside sir. politics. Asante. Let's shift Asante, over sir. to our next caller uh, who's calling from Ruaka. We understand he's called Kamau SG. Kamau, how are you doing? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Jesse. How ha are you? Very fine. Thank you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you, Nora. I'm going to enjoy Easter. Uh, Talk to us briefly. Yeah, yeah, briefly, I just wanted to... You didn't highlight much about the fertilizer. Because uh, from where I see, this should be a national disaster. When the studio board, NCBP, is selling fake fertilizer, it should be an issue of concern to everybody. Because what are we going to buy in the supermarket? If government is selling us uh, stones and uh, and those maskani uh, to their pulpa, it is very sad. On the other issue of uh, double speak, I, I will say this very fast. It is because Raida is not on the scene, and then the, the Kenya Kwanza have realized now we can look at things more critically. What did we pass? Because as long as Raira was there, our MPs from Mount Kenya and Litivare were emotional. They couldn't consider bills. And that is the most unfortunate thing about this country. Lastly, on the issue of uh, uh, Natembea and of course they combined the opposition, opposition is completely been compromised. The only person I trust is uh, 
or Mutata, any other person, and of course, in Stifuna. But other people, I think they are compromised. Oh, okay. It's a fair issue as I finish. Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Finalize. I is a, is a gun for hire. Uh huh. Uh, when I look at Natambea, he, he looks government, he speaks government, and if you walk like government, <laughs> you talk like government, you are government. Thank you. <laughs> Santi Sana. Uh, Kamau, right there, I think with the benefit of hindsight, just looking at the history of Natembea within <laughs> the local administration, and if it walks like a duck, it is a duck. Asante Sana, that's the time we had for our caller, so we can each have a minute or two to give the final remarks. What we've gathered from our callers uh, briefly, fertilizers come is a big shame. Natembea is a competent governor, that's according to Francis Moranga, and it's a big shame that MPs are psychophants when it comes to the art of doublespeak that we've seen the master. Uh, from Kamau, he says, fertilizer should be a national disaster on doublespeak. He says, when Raila was there, MPs were emotional and couldn't consider the fact of the matters at hand. And according to Kamau, Natembea is a gun for hire. <laughs> so, interesting. Let's Okay. Get the final comments from our panelists as we finalize today's edition of the show. Everyone had a chance to start, so I don't know who to start with. I can start. I, okay. start. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think there's this, um, I, I agree with the callers that the issue of fertilizers uh, still needs to be discussed and investigated uh, to the full. Uh, and it's not just fertilizer. I think we talked about this. There's the edible oils, there's fertilizer, uh, there's the issue seeds. of uh, seeds. There's also the issue of cancer, you know, in this current regime. Yeah, and surprised. generally, you know, the misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation around it. Uh, and I think uh, this must can actually take this conversation from just the local to the global context. Uh, then number two, uh, there's also the issue of, you know, the political speak by different politicians. And I, I don't think this is restricted to Transoia and the Natembea mm. rectangular war. I think politicians, irrespective of the public spaces that they find themselves, need to start speaking to issues and not speaking at each other. We, we are not interested uh, you know, in knowing which politician is bad. We are a lot more interested in knowing what politicians are doing to save uh, the situation. And looking at what has been happening in the recent past, I, I don't think it, is, it, it serves the public, you know, in any way to have politicians instigate violence in public gatherings. It doesn't benefit anyone. So whatever is happening uh, between Nachembea and, and, and the other politicians in that area, it needs to stop. They need to understand that the public interest is more important than any other person's interest and rein in on their violence and their rhetoric that is full of hatred and anger. Uh, last, let me just say that, uh, you know, it's also incumbent upon the public to be a lot more engaging in these things. The edible oil thing will disappear simply because we are losing that conversation. Okay. And I think if the media is not picking up that conversation, it is incumbent upon us as the public that is conscious to continue with the conversation and ask questions. All right, and we'll definitely pick it up as members of the fourth estate. As you come in, I can see Jared Matsiva saying, Jumbo, what, what Mulembe Nation is lacking is leadership, and that's why Natembea has ignited the wave of Tawe across Western <laughs> region. <laughs> Briefly, this mess. Oh, oh, Willa has invited me to talk about uh, disinformation and misinformation, uh -huh. and these are subjects very close to, to my heart. What is happening with uh, Natembea is uh, disinformation and misinformation within the Kenyan context. But at a global level, we should ask ourselves whether or not Kenya is actually a victim of disinformation and uh, misinformation. And uh, as indicated earlier on, there are many countries who are interested uh, in Kenya, and Russia stands out. It's been accused of uh, many things. So in my view, the, both the public and private sectors, they need to come up with a specialized agency to detect and fight disinformation at a national level. And at a local level, the media in Kenya should have uh, specialized desks to curb misinformation and disinformation displayed by politicians. Okay. Because Natembe is making people believe that he's the only leader in Western Kenya who can deliver and the rest have been doing nothing. And finally, I'd like to congratulate on uh, His Excellency Ambassador Sianga Bilio, the Angolan ambassador to Kenya. He hosted a function uh, a few weeks ago where they were celebrating uh, the, the March 23rd liberation. Unknown to Kevin here, who was in Mozambique a few days ago, Angolans stopped the South African uh, 
military regime from taking and capturing the entire of South Africa. Okay. Okay. And the ambassador said a very good function last week to educate Kenyans on that. All of right. course, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I can also host you after this. <laughs> I'll extend an invite. <laughs> Speaking of as you pick up, yeah. Don Subway says, well done, Kevin Nusido. You have represented us, the Transoya guys, well on the panel. So oh, interesting. You deserve a part on the back. Briefly. It's, it's going to be hosted by... <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Briefly, Osido. <laughs> Three things to, uh, that come to my mind. Uh, the first thing is citizen accountability. You see, I, I was very impressed by just uh, the farmers who came up out of their own person organizing and said, we are not buying this fertilizer because we suspect that it is fake and we're even going to return. The same issue happened in Kakamega where in fact uh, the county government, I think uh, farmers uh, you know, went in and uh, uh, wanted to ask very difficult questions around where is this fertilizer coming from. And so there's so many, many concerns that, that Kenyans have. And uh, we want to call upon Kenyans to organize themselves where you are. Even when your leaders are not speaking to you, speak out. Uh, do uh, letters, do memoranda, write petitions, whether they are responded to or not, one day history will say that you actually asked a question about something very important and close to your heart. Number two is state agencies, particularly the judiciary, and even uh, DCI and others. All these issues keep coming up. Is there a mechanism to give us feedback? And just tell us, the issue of the edible oil in Mefika Harper, and we have interviewed or arrested the following people, they are being questioned, and this is how far we are. Right. Because if we are not careful about it, JC, then um, it, it's going to be a circus repeating itself. And then the last thing is basically to call upon our leaders that you are in office for a specific purpose, for a special time. This is your time. Tomorrow there's going to be someone. What is your legacy? What are you leaving? Are you going to be the noisy governor? Or you are, are you going to be that performing governor? Especially at the backdrop of the ESCC uh, corruption report on counties. And, and if you see what, what's happening and going on in counties, I think the citizens expect much more from their leaders based on how early they rose up to go and vote for them and just the nice things which they said. So is it not an, an opportunity for them also to give back to the citizens? Otherwise, happy Easter. Asante Nisan, mm. happy yeah. Easter, gentlemen, and thank you so much for your indulgence right here on the round table. And that's a wrap for today's edition of Inside Politics. I hope you're adequately informed as you continue with the festivities. Take care and enjoy with moderation. My name is Jesse Rogers. Enjoy the rest of your viewing.